And then uh, I did see a reference to John Hook, and he was actually running a farm here. He had a plantation out on Burke's Fork, because there's references to that in some of his notes. And he was thinking about opening a, uh, a hemp mill and creating a hemp farm on one of his plantations. Yes? Uh, just to sort of address me about the land ownership and things like that, we have to take our mindset and throw it away and go back to a time where you were not a citizen, you could not vote if you were not a landowner. Uh, and even at the time of the passing of the, uh, many of the constitutions, many of the states said, well, if you have 100 acres, you could vote for a house. But if you had 50 acres and have paid taxes, you could vote in the Senate. So uh, there's a mindset of, of the time that the more land you own, the higher status you were in society, the greater, whether you actually had money or not, that if you own that much land, you, you could borrow, you could do other sorts of things. And if you read about Jefferson, and I mean, a lot of these early founders were always struggling for money, but they owned a lot of land. Mm -hmm. And with that, they really, they couldn't be ejected from the land and they things like power. that. They had power. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of our records will start, you know, we say people who shouldn't be there. Well, early settlers got here and they settled. They hard. And Native Americans were here and you know, we say, well, they were gone. Well, no, they weren't gone. They just didn't have legal status by our governments. And as this gentleman referred to, another tribe sort of came in and sold the land. But that doesn't mean the Native Americans left. It means they went to the American government and says, hey, we're going to sell this land to you. They're, they really didn't go in and bother clearing the land. There were people here. And so there's a lot of ambiguity about who was supposed to be here or not. And I, I prefer not to choose sides on that, but rather to recognize the conditions and how we judge those things. Mm -hmm. You know, so surrendering our mindsets uh, is very, very important if we want to get an understanding I see about how things work. Rights were connected. The rights that you had were connected with owning land. Oh, absolutely. And power and the control in the government. Yeah. Recognition just sounds like some people were kind of invisible because. Well, just, just, just like in England, if you did not own land, you were not guaranteed the rights of citizens because they weren't necessarily citizens, which is why you had a lot of pushbacks and revolts and things like that because the law says, and, they, and it was just sort of assumed, mm -hmm. that you had a certain status to be considered a human being or a citizen. And this is regardless of, of race or heritage or things like that. Um, and, and it just sort of evolved and sort of changed and mutated over time how we recognize things. And so I can say a sentence now which would have a completely different meaning 50 years ago, 100 years ago, and pre-revolution time. I did a similar map for Fluvanna County, which is where some of my Hiltons had lived prior to moving down here. And this goes back to the 1740s and 50s, and there are references to the Native Americans in those records. So you'll see quite a few references there. It's a different map, but in the mapping that you did, you probably found some land that's not owned by anybody in Floyd County. And then what, what happens? How does that Get well, I see a lot of later grants, like when it becomes Floyd County in the 1840s and 50s and 60s, a land that was never assigned to anybody, so that's that's where some of it went to. And there's some of it that are still, I don't know where it came from, who, who owned it. They may have been earlier grants back when it was Augusta County. And that's nearly impossible to figure out where it belongs now because back then they didn't have the references like the South Fork of the Little River or anything. So, I mean, one thing about that, there is a statute in the code that covers how that land is to be disposed of, okay. when it, whether it's accreted or otherwise. So there's actually a statute now, if you have a piece of property that was never owned, I probably run across one in 30 years of title exams over in Giles next to the big survey on the mountain over there. But there's actually a statute that addresses that now. That may be where some of these later grants were assigned by the county commissioner of Florida. Right. 
because I don't see that the land was ever seized for non-payment of taxes or anything, so that may have been along those lines. Yes? Um, did you find or run into things where, like, a military grant might have uh, just ignored, I mean, like, this land was given by the military, but then the local government citizens had given the land to somebody else, you know? You know, it sounds like that you didn't find too many disputes like that, but I find it difficult to believe that that just didn't happen sometimes. I didn't find any for the military grants because I would have been out further west. Yeah, okay. But it, you know, as we had the county precisioners and the lawsuits into the 1800s, there was a lot of disputes over where one property ended and where another one started. Right. But that, that's a survey versus a, uh, an authority issue. Right. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. the, uh, the museum, Floyd County Museum, has a settler's map that you can Yes, I used that quite a bit to make sure I was on the right track with some of these. Yeah. And when I got into blank areas that I couldn't find anything, I would refer to that and see the names and then start looking those names up to find where I had missed their records at. So that has names on it but no boundaries. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And is that mostly later than what you did? or? No, no, that, that covers the same period. I think these are all like the first landowners. And they just placed them in the areas where they lived. I see. And of course, this was back, it was great work because it was back in the day when there weren't online records that you could refer, research this stuff. Yeah. You know, so these people, I guess, they talked with the people that lived here and looked through the records that they had to create that. Lee? Yes? There were there land speculators in here as well. Yeah, I would assume probably a lot of those people like Austin Nichols, the people who bought these thousands of acres probably were. The area that is now Laurel Branch, mm -hmm. that road, that was a land speculator from Northern Virginia came in here, bought all that land up, and went back to Northern Virginia and bought the whole German community into Laurel Branch. Oh, sold the land That's to them? The slushers, the goody coops. Mm -hmm. All of them come from was, was, was by the speculators. And he brought his artisans and stuff to Floyd. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Where do they keep the records of uh, timber rights, mineral rights, that kind of stuff in Virginia? I don't know. I, I have not come across that. Or clerk's office, it would be in the deed records, just like uh, anything else would be. It would be a, uh, mm -hmm. something on the how, how far back would those records go in at your courthouse? <coughs> in theory, they ought to go all the way back. I mean, at some point, they didn't do the paperwork correctly. A lot of times, it would be a handshake, and they wouldn't be in the record. But to, to be enforceable, they'd have to be in that chain of title. And that theoretically goes all the way back to the first patent grant uh, that was made, in theory. And then you may be chasing it by the touch, you may be chasing it in Montgomery County, but it should be somewhere in the record either at, in, in a deed or as a reservation or in a conveyance of a, of a right that was done that way. Mineral rights are like that. There are tons of mineral rights in the county that are still back, way back, that are still there, but you have to really you know, get in there and do a full time exam to track the names. If you go to the courthouse, that's right around the 1870s or whatever, in the back of the land books, the tax records, they have <coughs> mineral rights, timber rights, whatever, actually preformed. Because they get taxed separately back in those days. It's changed and, you know, since then. So there are periods of time where you can find other records, but it should be in the deed. The only land I ever owned is surveyed with a grid system. I tell it's a lot easier than this. Yeah, yeah but that's why they had to have the attorneys doing stuff to make money. So. <laughs> Anyone else? Did you find a gap by any chance in the records for the Civil War period where a lot of a lot of records throughout the South were destroyed? No, I didn't because Floyd County's county courthouse wasn't burned. So okay. all of those records are still there. <laughs> and there is a gap in time, of course, because there was a lot of other things going on during those three or four years. And then, you know, the grants started back up after the Civil War. But um, it's not like, you know, uh, New Kent County and some of those other counties where they had their court in Richmond, where they had their courthouses burned several times. Some during the Civil War, some prior to that. Like New Kent County had its courthouse burned three different times. So that's why there's practically nothing prior to the 1860s in New Kent County. Wow. Why isn't our courthouse burned? Yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned the, the Civil War, and I 
I think I've heard that after, after the Civil War, there were a lot of specific areas where the former slaves, the black residents, settled. Is that show up on the maps at all? Or? No, not unless they receive a grant for the land. So that would probably be in deeds for the people who had sold the land to them. Okay. And that's, that's one place we really need some volunteers because we are trying to track some of that. You know, we, we've got areas where there was freedmen settlements and things that we just, we're, we need, that's one of the places we're working, that we could use some volunteers if anybody has an interest in doing it. So. You know, one of the things about this map that Lee's done, we can use it as a base for everything else. We can go back on there and mark uh, not only where people were at, but where the stores were, where the schools were, and track it all the way through. I mean, this is, it's an amazing map to work from, not only as a genealogist, but also from a, from a history standpoint, because you can locate everything based on the original settlement and, and move it forward. You ought to be able to track every single piece of property from that map to the, the present, in the theory. These didn't get recorded, they weren't uh, notarized, whatever, and there were gaps. Sometimes people just took property and started conveying. But bottom line is that there is a whole track, and those are the kinds of things we want to eventually sort of digitize together so we can have overlays eventually using these maps to, to work on. You, you'll see that in those chancery cases as well, where someone has passed away, but they had sold land to somebody else before they died, but they never got title to that land. So they had to go to court in order to get title to the land that they purchased. 10 or 50 yeah. years earlier. Yeah. The, uh, the old land records from the 1800s are, if you look at those very closely, they are segregated. You have the regular population, and you have the black population. I know when you look at, you look at the, the history of, of the town itself, it's definitely you know, a white population or a black population separated in the tax records. <coughs> Have you ever considered going back to the census records and the addresses there and then comparing them to the land ownership? I did that when I would come across a piece of property that I couldn't place anywhere directly. I'd start looking at the 1810, 1820 censuses to see who was living near this person. That would give me an idea where, where this property should belong. A terrible place where that is like on the northeastern part of Floyd County where a lot of the land grants just said the South Fork of the Roman. And that's were, were you able to find, <laughs> were you able to identify a potential owner that way? Not an owner, but I had to find where this land went to. Okay. So like if I had like a, a piece of property for Bartlett, but it didn't give enough description to say where it went, I would look in this early census records to see who was living next to them. And that would give me an idea on some of the properties I'd already mapped as to where this probably should belong. Yes, ma'am. Um, there was a cemetery um, out by sort of by Runnebag, but it's called Dry something or other, and it's like some Richards live there, and mm -hmm. I really think it's in Franklin County. But the fellow that grew up there took me to the cemetery out there, and there's gravestones that are like the profile of a person's head, and he said those were Indian graves, and I just wondered mm -hmm. if that was true. I've never seen that. Never heard of that before. Um, <laughs> Because he said they were the, like the profiles of the mm -hmm. people that were buried there. Uh, and it's still there. I've never heard of that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Smith. We need, to talk to, you. You. <laughs> we need uh, to talk to you. We need to talk to you I started that. off about five or six years ago or something like that. So I was looking through, I, and like a lot of us are probably interested in where did our people actually live when they were living here 200 years ago? And I looked around and I saw that some people had created maps like this for other counties. Like there's one for Lunenburg, there's a mostly complete one for Bedford, somebody has done a beautiful map for Amherst County, but there wasn't any for Floyd or Montgomery or Fluvanna, which is the other one that I had done. So I just decided, oh, I'll see if I can actually get this done. <laughs> so like six years later or so, I got it mostly filled in. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, just have a little, little gift for you. Thank you. There was a letter in there from somebody that wanted us to get it to you. I'm not supposed yeah. to get that. Connie had given that. Oh, she gave you yeah. it? Okay. Yeah.
want to thank everybody. The maps are available. Uh, before everybody leaves, if anybody didn't sign in, please do so because uh, because of the crowd size, I'm going to take advantage because we can use this for grant purposes later. Uh, so please sign in. Uh, if you have any questions, see one of the members. Uh, we will try to answer that. There's a table full of things, and we have some door prizes. Lilu, you want to dry away? over the music. Gretchen Miller, what do you want? <laughs> 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 <laughs>